This is a session that unfortunately, uh, Joanna Maria Glickor just uh, appointed us that she was delayed in another meeting. She's not going to join. So uh, it could be a session that we could do almost in Portuguese if it's not for the presence of our many uh, foreign friends that are here with us. So basically, this is a, a warming up of a team that it's going to be uh, of extreme importance these days. Uh, fighting COVID with mobile apps. I just really know uh, today that uh, the Spanish government is starting an initiative on this sense. So I would like to have the, the um, uh, 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 initial impressions from uh, the two persons that are uh, uh, so important in terms of the, this, uh, um, uh, the scene here. It's the uh, Lynch Pereira is the chief uh, uh, information officer of SPMS, the digital arm of uh, the Ministry of Healthcare, as we uh, uh, already heard this morning, uh, Honorable Jeremina Madeira, to mention that SPMS is uh, the, the, the shared services of the Ministry of Healthcare, is the digital arm of the healthcare, and uh, Engineer Domingos Pereira is the Chief Information Officer of this uh, organization. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I know you have a busy schedule and it's a really a pleasure to have you here for these initial comments. And also with us is Engineer Lin Santos. He's the head of the National Center of the Cybersecurity, which is the maximum authority in Portugal for cybersecurity. And we could not have two better uh, uh, opinion leaders or healthcare leaders. In this case, uh, Engineer Lin Santos is more broader than healthcare because it's cybersecurity regardless of the sectors. And uh, uh, it's really a pleasure that's to have you here, Engineer Vincent. Thank you so much for taking your time uh, to join us. And without further ado, uh, Engineer Ming Pereira, what will be your um, impressions, general impressions about the mobile app to fight COVID-19? Is this uh, possible or just an illusion? Well, uh, we have some ideas about it. Uh, I would like to share with you three small slides that uh, sure. Stay to the point uh, as I see it. Uh, let me see if I can share my slides. Okay, so uh, we have uh, nowadays we know that uh, we can face the COVID 19 with three approaches a group immunity, a drug, or a vaccine. And so far we cannot get the last two, so we have to face the, the, the fact that we will have to have a group immunity to go on with our lives. So the point is, how can we do it uh, with some control, allowing an exit strategy that allow us to, to go back to our lives without entering uh, on a drastic uh, new wave that put us all together in the same form of contagions. So we think that, um, the mobile phones can help, and the, the, the apps we can do it with, with that can help can help on this uh, on this care uh, to allow us with a good exit strategy. But we know that uh, this strategy uh, includes also some risks, uh, mainly privacy risks, that we should be uh, that we should take care and think about them. But first, let me tell you. Uh, how can we, uh, what is the ecosystem of mobile use in Portugal? We, we are Portuguese, we like to talk. So it's clear that because we have a population of about 10 million of people and we have uh, almost 16 million of mobile subscriptions. So we do like to speak by mobile phone, but um, we, don't, we don't have so many uh, smartphones. In fact, we have about 7 million um, smartphones and there is also an indicator that allows us to think what can our people do with these smartphones. We have about 6 million people that use social media with their, uh, with their smartphones. That would let us think that some people, some, uh, uh, a gross part of our population can use a, an app and can, can use the smartphones to, to, to do their business with the apps that we allow. But, in fact, we would, we would say that only about 30 to 40 percent of our population will be able to use correctly an app that allows us to, uh, to proper, uh, 
to get the proper consent to use it and to input the uh, data and so things like that. So the first the first question we have right now in Portugal is can can we prove efficiency with a coverage of 30 to 40 percent of population uh, in terms of control of the spread of the, the COVID uh, in Portugal and of course in other countries. So uh, this is the first question I would like to put to our, our group. Uh, but later, there is of course other fundamental questions that we should endorse in, uh, in any solution of contact tracing. First of all is privacy. Privacy is a, a different issue. For instance, I listened very carefully with Mahmoud's uh, presentation and I noticed that he was able in, in, uh, in Scotland to, to integrate different data from different places, uh, social care, health care um, and other, uh, other sources. So I wonder if in Portugal we can do it uh, so, so easily. Uh, with our privacy uh, laws, which I think are almost the same of Scotland, but still it's a question. And of course, the next question is, is this technology, the, the contact tracing effectiveness in, in, in that is able to uh, really uh, control the, the, the propagation of the, of the virus um, that we would like to, to understand and to, and to control in terms of public health. So what is the place, what is the, what, what, what is the, what the things should our public entities do to control the functionalities uh, and the amount of apps that tend to be created? Because in Portugal right now, we know at least that, uh, well, maybe three, four, five institutions from, uh, from universities to other institutions are trying to develop solutions like that and are offering them to, to, to us in order to, to, to allow us to control the, the spread. So there will be an amount of apps and the, 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 the case is, uh, should these apps be controlled by public entities or should they let alone to the offering and to the choice of all people? And of course, data should be pseudo analyzed. I mean, this has to do with privacy, of course. Uh, we should not, uh, allow that, that kind of uh, tool to identify people that uh, uh, friendly uh, tell us uh, if they are effective and, uh, and things like that. So, and in the end, we should probably have the insurance that after a while, data is destroyed locally or even uh, centralized if that is the case of the solution. So, what I would like to to put on the table is this kind of uh, issues and uh, have to see what our our colleagues have to say about that and what are the, the, the challenges they also face in their countries. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Mitch Pereira, for being so brief and uh, put up to the point with, uh, with this uh, presentation. Maybe we can leave the slide later on when we are doing the, the, the World Cafe. Jerlyn Santos, can you share uh, uh, your impressions about uh, this uh, mobile app to fight COVID? Is it uh, something that it's within our reach? Can it be done? Like, uh, I think in China already they have it, right? Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Um, um, I bring to this uh, to this topic. Uh, I'd like to raise some some issues. I don't have a presentation, sorry, but I think I'll be uh, clear enough to, to identify some, some issues that need to be addressed if we want to have a, uh, an application to, to trace COVID and to help us the, for a better return to normality. So um, the first thing I would like to bring is that we, we should uh, focus on the objective of this um, application of this mobile app. Um, technology can do a lot for us um, and is rather easy uh, to think to to set up a mobile application and start with a small objective and meanwhile 
um, this app can do a lot of things more. Well, in, in this case, I don't think this should be the best path, the best way to, to, to do it. We should focus uh, on a very small, a very precise objective of, of what we want to do with this app. And I think there's a broad consensus right now on this objective, the main objective of, the, of this app. And this should be to help the citizen to understand if they belong to a chain of infection. Uh, so that, that is a very simple uh, objective that can help us um, on this return uh, to, to normality. So if we all have uh, this app in a voluntary basis um, to understand if we belong somehow at and somehow and somewhere to uh, to, uh, to a chain of infection, and uh, this is um, well. This should be the, the object. This is the first issue. The second one is that we have uh, a couple of technologies that can do this. We have uh, Bluetooth, uh, we have GPS, and we also have um, metadata from um, from um, communication operators. Um, this is another issue where, where we want to, to actually uh, stay very simple and focus again on the objective. We, we need to choose the most efficient technology to achieve this, this objective. And I think also in this matter we have a broad consensus that Bluetooth, um, low efficiency, uh, low energy messages will be the, the best technology to, to achieve this and the less intrusive of privacy of the, of the users. Uh, then we have the process, third issue. We should design a process focused once again on the objective. Uh, the most secure process and the less intrusive process to achieve the goal. Um, I think the European Union gave us some, some uh, uh, clues on how to do this. Uh, and how to preserve privacy with the uh, anonymization of the information that is shared without central um, central uh, storage of information and with no uh, correlation with information from other systems. Uh, this way we can achieve the objective and uh, be less intrusive and preserve privacy of the users. Another issue I'd like to bring is about transparency. Um, I think the whole process, and this is connected with the last point I want to, to, to bring here, um, the, overall, the, the whole process should be as most transparent uh, as possible. This means uh, open code, this means scrutiny by the public, by the cybersecurity community to see uh, whether the code or the process involved in the, in the application is actually doing uh, what is meant to be and nothing else. And, this brings me to, to the last and I think the most important at this point issue, which is to look at the cybersecurity of this app in a perceptual um, way. Um, we can have the best solution, the best technology and the most uh, effective and less intrusive app in the world. But if the population under understands it otherwise, uh, this all will be a flop. This will not work and we will uh, not have uh, um, a good perception on how to uh, return to normality um, uh, with the help of this technology. So it's uh, more than uh, actually being the most efficient app, it, we need a very good communication plan to help population to understand that we have actually the, the most effective and useful app. So uh, whether, whether um, the solution we have, whatever the solution we have, we need a very good communication plan to assure the population that uh, this is a secure application. Uh, it, it only works for the purpose it was built for and uh, it preserves the privacy of, uh, of the users. I think, uh, these are the five uh, issues I would like to raise, and and, and there are very very important teach. issues. And I thank you so much, Geraldine uh, Sanchez, because now we have a good framework from where we are, uh, could start our discussions in terms of the Knowledge Cafe, as everybody will be involved 
uh, in uh, short rounds of conversations right now. So conclusions, I would invite uh, everybody to turn the video off, uh, except uh, Domingos Pereira and Lim Santos, which are we back with us right now. Mink Spread and Lynn Sanch, please keep the video on and the rest uh, turn the video down. So this is now, uh, we're going to use this time to do a round of conclusion about um, these, uh, the conversation. So uh, what, what uh, was the main impressions you got from the uh, breakouts uh, interactions uh, today? Is this something that we can do uh, up to fight COVID in Portugal? Please, Lino. Lino is muted. Yeah, you want me to start? Yeah. Um, I think from the both um, both groups, um, I think the, the the main idea is that we it's very useful to have um, uh, an app. Uh, we should have uh, uh, an app. Uh, I think this is the the main message. And the second uh, message from both. Uh, um, is that this uh, the solution should have an European approach um, if we want to to actually um, uh, help the the, um, the the lease of restraints um, and to have people moving around we, we will have to travel and uh, we, we we don't want to, to actually install, install several apps uh, if you go to France install the French app and and deal with the French language and not be able to to actually um, have the information if we actually been in touch with the, with the chain of infection so European approach and interoperability was uh, a common a common issue on, on both sessions Okay, fantastic. Nick Spreda, your well, impressions? Uh, well, the, the conclusions are, are really about the same. I should say that we speak, speak a little bit about the concept of privacy and the consent. And Carlos Cardoso remember me that he uses Google GPS and the GPS without asking him knows exactly when he's got, uh, riding his car or his motorcycle. So. There's a lot of things that nowadays we allow apps in our smartphone to do without our consent. So sometimes privacy, it's a matter of, uh, well, um, it's a matter of opacity, uh, like Lino Santos told us. Uh, sometimes we really don't know exactly what things do. So uh, it's, it's about perception. We think that the Google GPS is fantastic. Uh, so we allow it to do it. You use it without thinking a little bit, but uh, other things, mainly governance things, put us put us in in suspect that uh, they can be used for other purpose than the, the the main purpose. So it's mainly a question of perception. And the other thing that was added to the discussion, it's about the European requirements. We would like that the, the application, the app that we put in our smartphone is able to allow us to, to track the chain at the European level, not only at the Portugal level or the other countries. So that was the main conclusion. Fantastic, fantastic. I, I'm really proud to have in Portugal a, a team of such innovative IT leaders that are responsible at high level in our country and with an open mind in regards to what can be done and not. I thank you so much for being here uh, today with us. 